All right, Spaceflight Insider fans, I'm here at Space Launch Complex 46 in Florida. No, you didn't hear me wrong. I didn't say 37 or 40 or 41. I said 46. And we're hearing about how Space Florida and Orbital ATK are working to bring an old launch site back to life. Minotaur program, for those of you who have followed it, has been quite successful with a 100% success rate, uh, over 25 launches, launching it out of all of the USG ranges with the exception of the Cape Canaveral. So that's since changed with the, uh, the Orbital ATK award of the ORS-5 mission for the Operationally Responsive Space Mission, or Space Office and uh, the Cape provides, and LC-46 provides an, an excellent location for this mission because we are going equatorial, zero degree inclination at about 600 by 600 kilometers. So it's a perfect location for this particular mission. We're out here today uh, pathfinding our Minuteman procedures as well as the 1ASTS group's uh, uh, ground handling and pathfinder procedures that have been well established, but pathfinding them at this uh, LC-46. And uh, a, a number of modifications, Space Florida with the state of Florida have made a significant amount of uh, investment in this, uh, this property. This thing is a really an experience of partnership. And uh, so let me just give you a little bit of history of this place. This launch complex was built by the Navy in the, in the mid-1980s to do Trident missile testing right off of this pad. In the mid-90s, the state of Florida as well as the Air Force combined resources to build this mobile access stand you see here. And we had two launches from this pad in 1998 and 1999 of Athena rockets. Now the funding that did these improvements were not only federal, but state as well as private funds to get this pad up for those launches in 1998 and 1999. Since then, the pad has been sitting fallow. And thanks to our friends in NASA and the Orbital ATK team, we're excited to see this thing come back to life for a launch this summer. We also have been working closely with industry for future missions that will go out of this, this pad. And as a matter of fact, Senator Nelson uh, had a significant role in, in resourcing some of the improvements that we made in the underground communications room that you're going to see down here. Nobody is in this room for launch. They're far, far away. But this is the interface point, and the, there are cables that will go out of this room, up to the rocket, up to the payload. We're excited that this, this uh, launch is going to happen this summer. We have another mission also on the books scheduled for, right now it's scheduled for December of 2019, where NASA is planning to do the abort test mission, the Ascent Abort 2 mission, where they're going to put the Orion capsule on top and, and, and launch uh, the Orion capsule in a very challenging environment to make sure the launch abort system works. It's currently scheduled for December of 2019. So since um, about 2012, the state has put about $2 million into infrastructure. Most of that's been communications upgrades. And we've got about another $2 million to go until this thing is ready for launch. The work coming up for us is getting the mobile access stand. Our focus over the last 12 months has been getting ready for this Pathfinder so that the Orbital ATK team and the Air Force team can do this test. For the actual launch activity, our focus is going to be on getting the mobile access stand finished with upgraded electrical, upgraded lighting, upgraded fire systems, and all the things they need to actually conduct the operations here in July. And what we do here now is, is these are the first three stages of the Peacekeeper decommissioned ICBM. And underneath this first blanket is the, uh, these are thermal protection blankets on here because in July it's not going to be nearly as pleasant as you folks know <laughs> as it is today. Uh, to thermally p protect these boosters and the live boosters. So under the first blanket is the first stage of the PK and under the second blanket is the, st the stage two and three of the Peacekeeper. Uh, what we don't find out here 
is the stage four, which is most of our mission success electronics and a Orion 38 uh, motor, which is the standard Minotaur four. And then what we'll do for this particular mission is we'll have a, what we call an insertion stage assembly, which is uh, another uh, Orion 38. So again, we've, we've practiced, or excuse me, we've already pathfound and of course proved on, on various missions those operations of bringing out our encapsulated payload in stage four. So though the pad really wasn't ready and every program manager, if there's risk associated with his launch, he won't take it if there's another opportunity for him. And Minotaur to date has had the opportunity to use wallops in Virginia for their missions. And so our ability to reduce risk to benefit the orbital team and to benefit Florida by getting this pad ready to go is one, it played a significant role, I think, in Orbital's decision to choose to come here. That's right. The other reason, I believe, is that when this pad was first built in the mid-90s, we anticipated significant small launch vehicle activity around the world. Uh, there were constellations like Teledesic, 800 plus satellites that were projected. And so spaceports all over the world stood up capability to meet that demand. That demand never materialized. At the same time the war, Cold War came to an end, you could launch in Russia a whole lot cheaper than other places. And so those were all those factors played into why it's been so long for a launch from here. We are now seeing U.S. companies compete more aggressively globally, and that's why we're seeing the launch rates go up here at the Cape, uh, is because there's a, a more healthy commercial market for competition. So on the Cape Canaveral Spaceport, we work with federal enterprises as well as commercial companies to make Florida the best place in the world for aerospace business to happen. And so we are working closely with SpaceX and Blue Origin and all the other commercial providers to enable their ability to do operations here in Florida. We look at the Cape Canaveral Spaceport as becoming the center of global space commerce as we go forward. And that center of global space commerce will have launch at its core, but it's gonna have a whole lot more than launch as we're seeing with companies like OneWeb doing satellite building here in Florida and kind of expanding that business space beyond just the launch business. Launch business is core. So Florida brings the world is a great place to launch from. And we're looking at expanding that out into all of the other areas of global space commerce.